Welcome to the Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast, your go-to resource for navigating the world of entrepreneurship. Today, we're venturing into the realm of entrepreneurship, an intriguing concept that has been reshaping the corporate landscape. Entrepreneurship involves fostering innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurial thinking within established organizations. In this episode, we'll uncover the benefits and strategies to cultivate an entrepreneurial culture within companies. The Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast is your ultimate launch pad for igniting ideas and skyrocketing your entrepreneurial dreams. Tune in, buckle up, and let's unleash the entrepreneurial spirit within. Your two hosts will be Professor Gary Palin and serial entrepreneur Ryan Budden. Hello, Professor Palin. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Fantastic. Hey, we've got together to discuss entrepreneurship today. So we say the word entrepreneurship over and over and over again throughout these podcasts. This may be a new term for people. Entrepreneurship is a system that allows employees to act like entrepreneurs inside of a business or organization. In layman's terms, it's allowing someone to be entrepreneurial in the business without them having to own the business. That term was first coined in the 1970s. It was by Norman McRae in The Economist magazine. Famous management theorist Peter Drucker picked it up and popularized it. And since then, it's becoming a mantra of many companies, even larger companies, that are encouraging you to be entrepreneurial within the company. Without a doubt, you hear quite a lot about it now in the modern work landscape of what large companies are expecting from people not only what you can do to stand out, but that baseline expectation that there is some sort of entrepreneurship going on. Employees taking the initiative to look at programs and initiatives and how they can add their own spin, not just file through the status quo. It can have so many benefits if you have truly an entrepreneurial culture and you're allowing your company, your employees to be entrepreneurial. You see a spike in innovation, it helps with talent retention and attraction. The employees are more engaged when they can use their creativity. You have wider diversity of offerings. There are so many strong benefits as reasons why you should do this. So I think it'd be fun to approach it from two angles. What can companies do to foster entrepreneurship? And what can employees do to develop entrepreneurship themselves? Why don't we start with the company level? What's a system that companies can use to foster entrepreneurship internally? You need leadership support to start with. If it doesn't get true buy-in from the top, it's not going to happen. I couldn't agree more with that. I think so oftentimes the management level, you see this huge push from the C-suite to have entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship flourish in their company, and it gets squashed at that mid-level management level where they're metric-driven or they're being a little bit of a helicopter and they don't allow initiatives to get changed around them. I'm not sure why that is. There's a number of reasons that it happens. I think in terms of my very early career at NC State, the first time I uttered the word entrepreneurship at a faculty meeting, I got the hell beat out of me. I had a friend that came to me and said, if someone wants to shoot an arrow in your back, they're going to have to pull one out to make room. Oh, wow. That's quite an intense visual. What happened was the visual that I thought of is being an entrepreneur within a very bureaucratic structure. I was being viewed as a virus to the body and the white antibodies came and tried to destroy me. They were fearful of you adjusting what their status quo was. That's the answer to your question. Is the status quo and you're threatening their status quo and their power. Top management wasn't supporting it and I tried to force it. That was very, very difficult. Let alone at a university, which is meant to be open thinking, is the core tenant of what they're doing. That's what they tell me. A really great example that highlights one strategy is Amazon. Amazon, in my experience, fosters entrepreneurship unlike any other company I've read about. And the way they primarily do it is through critique papers. I'm not sure every employee is required to, but a lot are required to write critique papers, a paper on what they don't think is going well and how they would change it. And then how they would change it is the critical part of this because that's the entrepreneurship. What they could do to change a system that's broken or not working as effectively as it could. And they take them seriously. There's lots of examples of people that have had these critique papers turn into a full-time job for them. 
that takes top management to support that type of activity within. I was thinking back to how I was able to move forward and introduce entrepreneurship at NC State. It was by having champions above me support me. Having that infrastructure and that mentorship, if you will, within your company, if you want a truly entrepreneurial culture, you have to allow champions to succeed and allow them to mentor and other people to mentor to help to start to build that culture. That can take place at really large Fortune 50 companies or really small 10-person companies. Oftentimes, I work with small to medium startups that their CEOs, their founders are extremely entrepreneurial, but they rule with an iron grip on everybody below them. And they're not championing that same spirit that have, has gotten them to where they are. And the company also has to provide resources and they have to provide incentives and recognition and rewards for being entrepreneurial. People will behave as you're measuring them. If you don't measure them that way, typically they're not going to behave that way. Some of us truly entrepreneurial will still do it. But very often, as I mentioned, they become viewed as a virus and they get pushed out. Very often they don't succeed. It's funny you say that because it's so easy to look at a company and say they're incentivizing their employees really well or they're not incentivizing their employees really well. Having a look at what competitors in the industry people you'd like to mirror and how they're incentivizing entrepreneurship is a great way of fostering it within your own company. You have to also embrace failure within the company. Don't punish failure because if you punish failure, people are going to be risk averse. Yeah. Why would you continue doing an action you got in trouble for not doing well before? Recruiting truly entrepreneurial personalities. One of the best ways to encourage that is to set clear objectives tell them where you want them to go, provide them the resources, and then get out of their way and let them do it. Allow autonomy. Then they will flourish. I believe that's called the point and shoot management style. That's my style pretty much. Yep. Allow people the autonomy to go figure it out. Also celebrating success. Yeah, that's a big one. Rewarding, right? Understanding even a small win needs some attention paid to it if you want that behavior to be replicated over and over again. Now, very often people that are within these corporate structures, especially if they're into micromanagement, they tend to think I'm not entrepreneurial and this scares them. Whereas you can provide training and development to move someone along the entrepreneurial scale. As a matter of fact, that's one of the products that you and I offer to companies. Right. And I will have people say, well, I can't learn how to be an entrepreneur. You can't teach someone to be an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur in this case. But I give it an analogy to I can't teach you to be Rembrandt, but I can teach you techniques to be a better artist and to paint at a higher level. I can't teach you to be a Mozart, but I can improve your skills in playing a musical instrument. The same thing holds true with entrepreneurship. You can help develop and foster and move them up the scale to an entrepreneurial performance. Yeah, that's a great analogy. And it really rings true in my experience as well. So we've sort of talked about the company level. Now, what can employees, what can the average person do to foster entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship inside their company? To be proactive, you have to be willing to take risks. And with that, you have to be adaptable. Adaptability might be the key to it. Understanding that you've got an objective to get towards. That's the basis of it. And there are lots of ways to get there. So how can you foster this creative approach? to getting to the same destination and bringing those around you on that journey. Two other areas I would encourage someone is tenacity. Be tenacious. Don't give up readily. And with that, and very often it will justify you continuing to pursue this, is to be very customer-centric. Because if you're focusing on the customers and the customers are reacting positively, then upper management very often will say, let's keep this movement forward. We're getting an increase in sales, customer satisfaction surveys, whatever it is. No success, in other words. <laughs> yes. Also, I would say continuous learning. Always continuously pursue knowledge. Like, say, for example, listen to a podcast by two individuals talking about let's be entrepreneurial. <laughs> we might have a good recommendation for one. Those are some thoughts on what an individual should do.
I think a big one as well is we mentioned it from the other direction, but seeking a champion, seeking someone in upper level management that has an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish and how it might not be with the status quo to make sure that you have some sort of backing from that person. Definitely. And you can float under the radar for a while if you have that downfield blocking from your champion. And then when you're ready to surface, there's more immediacy of result and it's harder to be attacked. Yeah, you've got some momentum behind you. You're not just breaking rules. That's a thought process, assuming the company does not have an entrepreneurial culture. If they have a total entrepreneurial culture, these obstacles tend to parse out off to the sides. These some still exist, but they tend not to be as deep. I advise my students when they're looking at a company, if they want to be entrepreneurial, to truly analyze the culture and talk to people within the company, do they support this or not? And if they don't, I suggest they go work for another company. Right. A lot of companies are getting it right these days, and they're spending a lot of energy to foster entrepreneurship because they realize that's going to give them a cutting edge against their competitors. And 95% of companies in the United States, SMEs and above, are listing an entrepreneurial thought process in the top five characteristics they're looking for in a future employee. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? If they're looking for that, I hope they have a system to foster it. And if they don't, they can call us. We'll help them. <laughs> That's exactly right. I love that. <laughs> well, any final thoughts on entrepreneurship? I encourage all companies to foster a culture of entrepreneurship. I'm very confident their results will be positive and they will continually grow at an accelerated rate. They can ward off competition that we've talked about previously, having higher levels of customer satisfaction. Basically, good things will happen. That's a good note. I'll just add as my final note that you're never too small to foster entrepreneurship. You're never too small to squash it either. So focusing really early on systems that you can put in place to foster entrepreneurship, even if you're only a five, 10 person company, can really make a huge impact on the output. That's the truth. Well, let's get entrepreneurial. Let's get entrepreneurial. As we wrap up another episode of the Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast, we extend our gratitude for your presence and attention. Your dedication to the entrepreneurial spirit fuels our passion for creating this podcast. Check out profspirit.com to discover resources and courses designed specifically for innovators like you. Stay on the cutting edge by following us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, YouTube, and other platforms as it is released. Until then, Keep the entrepreneurial flame burning.